What piercings can you stretch? We're going to go through uh, some examples of that. We're also going to talk about some of the risks that are involved, um, what you should consider in just the whole process in general. Coming up next on Body Piercing Basics, episode number 112. So you might want to just stick around. Before we get too far into this, first off, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Hope you're enjoying the videos and learning lots of things. But you might not quite know who I am, though I say it on every video. My name is Davo. Um, I'm a professional body piercer. Have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio, located right here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So, when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking about a level of expertise that comes from being in the body piercing industry for well over 27 years and also from piercing, uh, stretching, stretching my own piercings. Quite a few of them, actually. For those who are new to piercing, what we're going to talk about today is stretching piercing. That's where you actually slowly increase the width of the jewelry and cause the piercing to increase in size. This is often referred to as gauging or gauges or gauged, uh, and it makes me hurt every time I hear somebody say that. Basically, to me, it has the same effect as walking into a tattoo studio and walking up to a tattooer and saying to them, hey, dude, tattooer dude, can you take your gun and tat me? It just doesn't sound right, and it anyway it just kind of hurts every time i hear somebody say that i think hot topics may have been the ones that came up with this terminology it's a slang term and it's a but it's a total misuse of those words and every time i hear it it makes me cringe a little bit and i do believe that somewhere in the world someone takes either a very adorable puppy or a soft and fluffy kitten puts them in a burlap bag and then drops it into a river. If you are gauging something, you are actually measuring. That's what that word means, to gauge. If you've gauged something, it means you have measured it. If you're using something called gauges, you are using an instrument to measure things. So unless you are actually taking the jewelry out of your ear or wherever it is and actually measuring out things, they are not your gauges. With that out of the way, let's move on to some of the uh, actual uh, information. Uh, what, I'm gonna, what areas of the body are best to stretch? When you consider the type of area or the type of piercing that you want to stretch, uh, non-cartilage piercings are a good option. Cartilage piercings do take an extremely long time to stretch, and there's always a possibility that that can cause damage to the cartilage that is uh, only reversed with surgery. So cartilage piercings, yes, they can be stretched, but it takes an extremely long time. The next thing to consider is how pliable the area is or how stretchy the area is. For example, your earlobe's a lot more stretchy and a lot more forgiving than, say, your upper ear. One is going to be a good candidate because it's more pliable and more stretchy and more easily to maneuver, while the other one is going to be a much more difficult option. Next is how thin the piercing itself is. Now, the wider the piercing is or the more tissue it goes through, the longer it's going to take to stretch that piercing, just like the longer it's going to take to heal the area. Next thing is how quickly it heals. A lot of things contribute to, to healing and how quickly your body can produce tissue. One of the biggest ones being blood supply. If it's a blood-rich area, it's going to heal faster. Thus, it's going to stretch faster. Next one is, is there a lot of room? For example, if you've done a piercing on like an eyebrow where the area above it between the jewelry and the surface of your skin is very thin, it's not going to be a good candidate because of rejection. Before we move on to the next part, if you like this video, find it informative, find it helpful in any way, shape, or form, please give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you liked it. Um, also, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time we post something. Next up, we should talk about how do piercings stretch. Now, to talk about that, you have to talk about healing. 
And when you initially do a piercing, it kind of goes through those initial two steps. First one being is kind of the acceptance period. This is a period of time where your body's constantly reminding you that you have an open wound and you put this metal object in it and you should take it out so that it'll be easier for your body to heal it. During that period of time, you'll see redness, discolorization, heat, tenderness of touch, inflammation, and maybe a little bit of slight bleeding off and on. The next stage is the actual healing stage. Your body accepts it that you're not going to take it out and says, hey, this fool's not going to take this out, but I can't leave this open wound here because the fool will get an infection and kill us as it's your body talking. So it's with you all the time. Everything you do, it has to come, come along for the ride. Anyway, so then it starts producing tissue around the jewelry from the outside inward until it seals up the wound and it's no longer acceptable to infection. At this point, the tissue is very thin um, and is more acceptable to damage. So your body starts producing additional tissue around that tunnel to thicken it up and also to make it a little bit more elastic in giving. And also it kind of grows away from the piercing, leaving a gap between the piercing and the jewelry. So what happens during the stretching process is... Your body goes, they put in this larger piece of jewelry. Now I've got to grow away from it even further. So it will produce additional tissue around that jewelry and outward to make sure that there's a separation between the jewelry and the piercing. Make sense? Before I move on to the next part, check out our merch store. Link is in the description, especially if you like t-shirt swag and other things. Link's in the description. Also, there's one of those merch bars down there to peruse. Next up, let's talk about the risks. What are the risks with stretching? Well, the first one is uh, with oral piercings is it can increase the likelihood of damage to teeth, gums, etc. Tongue piercings are some of the easiest piercings to stretch. However, every time you put a larger piece of jewelry in, the ends, the balls get larger. So you're actually increasing the length. You're also increasing the amount of space that that jewelry takes up and the amount of contact you can have. The same goes for any like lip piercings, labray piercings, beauty marks, etc. You're increasing the risk of those problems. The other thing with anything that's entering the mouth is there's a possibility because your body will continue to try to grow away from the jewelry of creating a big gap that at some point either drool could come out of or saliva or you could actually cause dry mouth. Uh, this is would be a problem, especially with extremely cases of extreme large stretches. The next thing is blowout and tears. Blowouts or tears are where you push that stretch too quickly and you damage the, the existing piercing. Usually, if you push it too quickly at first, that tissue will just get to a point of thinning out. It still is lactistic, but there's these soft spots, stretch marks, so to speak. So it may not do it right away, but then you do it the next time and suddenly it bursts and then you're starting the healing process all over again. Now, what reforms into that area is thin scar tissue. So you have the same problem the next time you do. So basically, when you have tear outs or uh, blowouts or tears, it's because you've pushed beyond your body's elasticity or the skin's elasticity. The next one is rejection. And this is a situation where it's a piercing that is shallow in the body, like an eyebrow or a nipple or a navel or something where there's just a limited amount of space. Usually, your body will kind of grow a bump outward, kind of a hill outward from the jewelry to give it extra space. However, if you start stretching, that area between the surface and the jewelry is going to start to get thinner in most cases. It generally doesn't want to grow inward. It grows outward. The same thing can happen with a lobe piercing where you just keep stretching it until that thin area on the bottom bursts and you have this floppy thing instead of a lobe. You have two lobes. Call you two lober. Or three lober. The last one is you get to the point of no return. With any piercing, there is a point where you have stretched to the point where your body can no longer squeeze that piercing back together and close it. This is really common with um, earlobes where the only way they're going to close up that, that, that loop or that piercing that's stretched out so far is with some type of surgical procedure. So that's where you get to the point of no return. That varies from person to person. Most people, it's right around that four to two gauge point where the body's just like, uh, this is too much work. I can't do this. Now let's go down through the different piercings and kind of talk about some that are a little bit more acceptable to stretching than other ones. Starting with ears. 
Ears, of course, the lobe is your easiest option. Cartilage piercings are possible, but it's extremely slow and should be done with a lot of caution. Uh, slowly over a period of time. I've had a couple of my upper ear cartilage that were initially done with 18 gauge that I do wear 16 gauge in. It took a long time for them to fit comfortably inside there. And uh, it really, uh, to be honest with you, it, once I got to 16 gauge, I'm like, screw this. I'm not going any further. Uh, as far as lobes, though, usually a good candidate. It's thin tissue, lots of blood supply, um, very electistic usually works out pretty well and can be done fairly rapidly. Now let's, let's talk about facials. When you start getting into those very large gauge jewelry, you're starting to really thin out the area that's between the jewelry and the front. And this is a very big factor with eyebrow piercings. Um, if you start stretching them, you're not only adding thicker jewelry and thinning out that area between the jewelry and the service, but you're also adding a lot of weight, which could be a contributing factor and cause issues. Uh, nostrils, very, very difficult to stretch. Uh, it's cartilage piercing, just like upper ear cartilage. You could do it, but it's going to take a long time. Uh, I would say the same thing of piercings that I don't do, like bridge of the nose. Uh, service piercings should never be stretched. Things like anti-trachis or, uh, service tracheses, anti-eyebrows and et cetera. There's no real reason to stretch them. And I really wouldn't advise it. Septums, on the other hand, are very pliable to stretching. That tissue that's between there, the cartilage is about as thin as it is in your earlobe. If they've hit that sweet spot, they are very easily stretched um, over time, fairly rapidly. It's a quick healer, a lot of blood supply, etc. So they're a good candidate if you do want to stretch. Oral piercings. Tongue piercings, easy to stretch if you give it enough time. The only thing I said earlier, we were I was talking a little bit about this, is each time you increase the thickness of that barbell, the jewelry is going to get longer. It's going to have more contact with teeth, gums, and the roof of your mouth, and the bone structure. It's also going to be a bigger target for you to bite down on. So keep that in mind, in mind when you do stretch your tongue. As far as those that enter the mouth, all of them are fairly easy to stretch, uh, at least my minor stretches. Uh, the only problem is, like I said earlier, is if you go into really, really large gauge jewelry, you can create a situation where there's a large enough gap that it may cause issues with uh, saliva leaking out and also with uh, dry mouth where you're sucking in air and it's just drying out everything. I know you've seen the video or the pictures on the internet of the guy that has it like out to two inches. Um, whether or not he has health problems in the future is a question. The other thing is eating. So, yes. And you also still have that additional size. Usually with Libre studs, this is not going to be a big factor when the size gets thicker. Um, the weight might be a factor or make the jewelry sit differently than it originally did. Um, but for the most part, unless it's a ring, you're not going to have a lot of weight going on unless you get into really, really, really thick jewelry. With those out of the way, let's move on to torso. Nipples, they can be stretched. It just takes an extremely long time. I stretched mine from 14 gauge up to 6 gauge. It took probably about six years or so. Um, it was not a pleasant experience to say the least. Uh, they did not like it at all, um, and I actually lost my left one because that tissue started to thin out at the top, and it eventually got caught on something and basically ripped out. It's perfectly fine. I didn't even feel it when it happened. I know everybody did this when I said that, but and eventually I'm going to have it re-pierced. The nipple formed right back together. I'm not a three-nipple kind of guy. But at the same time, you do have to consider the wider, the more you stretch that piercing, the more thinner that area gets between the surface and the jewelry. So it's more acceptable to damage. The other thing is, is the nipple area will definitely increase or get longer as you stretch the piercing. So you may start out with more uh, underdeveloped or less than developed nipples, but over time have much more developed nipples than you had originally. Naval piercings, probably not a great idea, to say the least. Uh, these, uh, they can stretch out on their own. They can get very loose if you leave them alone long enough. It's not a problem to stretch them. It just comes down to the how deep they're done and how, more, how far they are into the navel. Also, there's the weight factor, which is going to add to more 
probably cause the piercing to stretch out more, but not evenly, and uh, all kinds of other problems that are going to uh, be attributed to having larger jewelry in that part of your anatomy. Now let's talk about female genital piercings. Female genital piercings, they all can be stretched. Um, the primary ones, the only thing with them is the weight can be a big factor. This is very thin tissue, and it can really start to thin out the tissue. This is especially true with outer labia or inner labias because there's so much weight on them. Uh, clitoral hoods, uh, vertical, I really would maybe going up to maybe 12 or 10 would be okay, but really going into that really large jewelry, it, it may cause some problems eventually. Um, otherwise, outer labias, et cetera, can be stretched. It just takes a while. They usually... I would say other than outer labias, they're very quick stretches. Outer labias tend to take a little bit longer just because it's a longer piercing. Lastly, male genital. Uh, Prince Albert piercings are notorious for stretching on their own. It's thin tissue, lots of blood. Your body will pretty much grow away from that jewelry on a regular basis. Uh, usually it's not uncommon to have people go up three, four, ga three, four thicknesses within, uh, you know, the first year, year and a half. So, and it's kind of trying to combat some of the leakage issues and et cetera, this piercing has. So, uh, plan on it stretching. Frenum piercings, uh, anything that's done on the shaft, those, you kind of have the surface problem where if you stretch it too much, it may thin out that tissue to the point where your body will reject it or it will get damaged. Uh, you got to do it really slowly. You got to basically, anytime you feel any pain with it, you need to stop. Uh, usually with those, I don't, I, I've seen them stretched out really, really big uh, with no problem, but I really, Really, really want to emphasize, really, <laughs> that you want to give it enough time to generate tissue because it's one of those ones you want to kind of do slowly and see what your body can handle. Aphidelias, amplings, I, both of those are going to take a long time to stretch, and it's not going to be very comfortable. I, they can be, but I really wouldn't advise it. Didoids, really, if you can get them to successfully heal and et cetera, leave them alone. Maybe put shorter barbells in or smaller balls or something, but stretching tends to cause issues with that piercing from the same point of it's close to the surface or on the surface edge. Now, haftas, scrotums, and gishes all can be stretched. Uh, usually, you want to only go up a few gauges here and there. Do take your time. They can take a little while to stretch, just like a, any other piercing. They are on the surface, on that just below, and they tend to grow this kind of loop around them. You want to make sure to monitor how thin that loop is becoming because it can tear just like any other piercing and fairly easy because it's soft tissue. Well, uh, the only other thing I'll tell you is that weight can contribute to stretching. Uh, using lighter jewelry like titanium or glass, et cetera, will reduce piercings from stretching too quickly or stretching uneven. So always pick the lightest piece of jewelry you can regardless of what you're stretching. In the weeks to come, I'll probably do one on methods of stretching, and we'll talk a little bit about that. There is an older video that I did on stretching a while back, but it's been a couple years, so we might need to update that. If you uh, have a comment, have a question, what have you, or have something to add, maybe your experience stretching piercings, please leave a comment. I generally answer them when I have time. Till next time, here's hoping only piercing skill with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Take care. Check out some of these other videos.